Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I'm gonna do a lab tour. Uh, you might have seen I didn't post too many videos uh, the last weeks and it is because I'm rearranging the whole place here. So let me walk you through it. So we start with the, with the famous pipe and it is really ideal because I can lay out all my cables and it's easy to grab. And uh, yeah, it's a great overview of uh, what it is. And in the bottom there, I put some extra drawers, which is great for tools, for all my devices that I usually just had to laying around. So I have the microscope right there. As you can see, it's really zooming a lot and it's super clear. I think that was the DM9. I had a video about that somewhere. And uh, well, here I have all my voltage references. Some RF stuffies. DMMs. LCR and scopes. Etc. Great to have close by. And of course, the PC is there. I'm doing now the some SDR radio, just receiving radio, but I also do the spectrum analyzer, which is the little uh, USB spectrum analyzers that I have. Uh, nowadays, I also have a real spectrum analyzer. It is the Sigland SSA 3021X Plus. So it goes up to 2.1 GHz, which is great, super fast. Uh, here, I have my uh, RF sampler, because of course you don't want to blow up your input. Some other standards and references. And of course my Marconi for the radio tests. And then we have my nice scope. It is the SDS from Sigland, the 1202X, 200 megahertz, two channels, the Vector or Rosui, the 4090C LCR meter works great and of course my Philips with an extra uh, prescaler so it can go up to 8 gigahertz then we go a little bit up then on top here I have my GPS and the GPS Glonash and the GPS Galileo all the external reference and then let me zoom in a bit there in the top, the tiny SA, I did a video about that. Then we have here the FA2, the frequency counter, the WBHG1, very nice uh, signal generator, also goes up to a few gigahertz. This is my uh, PLL, and it's connected to external reference, and here I can do any frequency from 1 to 50 megahertz I think or even up to 200 uh, one of my distribution amplifiers right here well, famous frequency counter the 5385 from HP did a video about that also the, it's also famous from HP the 3478A multimeter here we go this is my RE2 frequency counter it goes up to 3 gigahertz and it has a lot of digits then we go bottom to top, the Sigland 6.5 digits, the SDN 3065, this one has the scanner card, so it's an SC version, and uh, I made a breakout box on that one, so I can easily just connect all the channels without moving the meter. This is my Echelant, I started to like it more and more, it's the 34401, it is super fast and super precise, it heats up also very fast. I have here a Sigland generator, Sigland also, the SDG 1010, I think goes up to 10 MHz. Then I have here my field tech, it is the FY6900, very famous. I created an external reference on this one, and I think it goes up to 50 MHz this one, or 60, I don't remember. Here, the Unity. Also very famous, the UTG 962E goes up to 60 MHz, and I built external reference on that one. 
here another distribution amplifier and just turn that one around because I just have my fixed devices on there another is the Gentech 80 megahertz the PSG 9080 not necessarily a fan of it great the display is big and the menu is sort of okay only it is not that stable that's a pity variable with this one this is my three channel power supply linear one and I think it goes even up to five amps uh, three amps twice it is the SPD 3303XE very nice and my fault craft if I really need power on the lower voltages I think it's 15 volts up to 40 amps so power if I'm working on my transmitters then a little bit more to the right I have here my Tektronix 475 2 channel 200 megahertz analog another DC power supply 3 channels also 3 amps 30 volts and I have here my electronic load 400 watts 150 volts 40 amps also great power and I have two little power supply switch mode one to 30 and the other one 60 volts this is my 12 volt for the lab so I don't have my adapters lying around everywhere so everything that needs 12 volt goes through this one my Weller famous Weller have it for 25 years I think I have here my desolder station works great I have here the action and uh, here is a re hot air rework station and skit also made the modification for the power switch it's a video there also and my DCUU here you can see all the power I'm using right now so it is uh, almost 1300 watts now everything is switched on so uh, it's slowly getting hot here also here we have some uh, older power supplies I'm still working on those or I just uh, don't have a better location for them a lot of, lot of them are uh, from Delta Electronics a lot of different types also some funnels and here is a bigger one still need to repair that also Delta Electronics up to 70 amps here is a very nice DC source from Roden Swatch uh, minus 40 plus 40 volts very precise multi-channel so that was the desk now we're gonna go to my other collection and it's kind of in color this is all brownie so that's all kidly air rifle hp it's it's all gray so let's turn the camera have a closer look okay we start uh, on the top it's the kidly 167 pro multimeter very rare recently made a video about that one uh, the kidly 175 also nice it's the one with the backlight option here I have the Kidley 177 and the Kidley 169 this one I still need to uh, do something with the power supply and this is also one of the more rare the handhelds the 129 from Kidley and we have some more recent one this is a voltage source the Kidley 230 goes up to 100 volts and it goes down to a few millivolts it's really precise I have the Keatley here the 224 it's a current source it really goes from uh, microamps up to 100 milliamps wide range very precise then I fear the Keatley 192 I still need to review that one it is a uh, 6.5 millimeter I have here the 195 that is 5.5 and then I have below there then we have the 199 with the scanner card and the 199 without the scanner card and uh, they are both uh, 5.5s then I have here a great one I also need still to review this one it is the, the Daytron or Wavetech it is the 1071 and it is 7.5 digits 
7.5 and then we come to the Nixies it is the the Fluke 8200 and as you can see it's super super bright and I have here the 8120 same story super super bright okay and then we go to my uh, homemade 19 inch wooden rack and uh well this is as high as the tripod goes and i'm already at 160 i think or higher but uh, we start in the top it's a frequency counter from hp and it's the 5315 i believe and we have here the two channel the 5334b i have a pulse generator right here and it goes up to 50 megahertz and it is the 8112a and here I have the pulse and function generator, also 50 megahertz. That is the 8116A. Then below that we have a little bit of a, of a mix. And uh, this one I found in the UK, it's a Daytron, it's the 1059. Not too much to find about it, but uh, it's ni nice because it has this uh, special uh, high voltage uh, display. It's different from the Nixie, it's different from the LCD. Here we have another Nixie and it has lots of digits also. It is the Fluke 8300A and as you can see it is near new. This is really museum quality almost. This one I also run into it is the 8500. And as you can see it also has quite some digits. So this is what it looks like from a distance. Here is the whole rack. And uh, well, I have some more things to show. And also now, because I clean up, we can have a look in the back what I have stored there. Okay, now we have some frequency counters from HP. This is the 5326A and the 5326B. And as you can see, the B has here an extra voltage input, which is nice. This is one of my latest finds, and I'm really happy about it. It is the... 5345M version, the mic version. So it is the high stability oven. And as you can see, I already cleaned it and the display is super, super bright. This took some work, but it really looks amazing. Yeah, these are also one of my latest acquisitions. This is here, the Tektronic, the TDS 744A. It is four channels and it has five megahertz on each channel and it can do two giga samples but with the heck you can bring it to two four channels one gigahertz that's kind of cool so we're going to play with that here this one i had actually had a week ago two weeks ago it's a marconi signal generator my other marconi the 2955 goes up to one gigahertz and this one as you can see goes to 2.7 this is the middle version, you have the 2030 that goes up to 1.35 and uh, this one, the 31, goes to 2.7 and there is also uh, the 32, I think it goes to 5 or 6 gigahertz. These are uh, nice generators and also they have a lot of uh, uh, audio generates options, it has a sweep function, it has sub audio, it can do five tone, it is uh, very advanced. Then below that we have a Keatley, it's an old one, very old one, and it is the 246 high voltage supplies and it goes up to 3.2 kilo volts, so it is super dangerous. Uh, 3.1 well, anyway, it uh, can give you a tickle. And it is with tubes, and I got the spare tube, so this is great. And then I have my uh, AC power supply, AC power source. Uh, it is, uh, I think it's one kilowatt. And, uh, well, you can see it there, 0 to 310 volts AC, 45 to 500 hatch, one kVA. So, it's a big one. Then below that I have some extra projects. This is another oscilloscope from Tectorix, the TTS220. I will be replacing the display, replacing the knob and fixing the BNC connectors. And then here we have a little doorway and there we go to the storage area. 
Oh, here I'm storing my parts. And uh, instead of using all these little plastic drawers, I actually use very big drawers. But inside them, I have all these little plastic drawers. So if you look at front space, this is very effective because it goes very deep and I don't have any straight walls here. So I need to be very effective with my uh, space. So like this, I can store thousands and thousands of parts. Uh, you can see I store a lot of things. Some things I already reviewed, some things I still need to do. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time.